today I um, I have a lot of stories to tell you guys because our value of the week is care. And I know you must have, you know, uh, figured out by now what care looks like because of, you know, you guys have been in school for a while. But I want to show you a few incredible stories of how care is shown um, with the animal kingdom. Today, one of the stories I want to tell you about is one of the birds called Jam. So, uh, I live at home uh, a few years ago with three birds. I used to just live with three and then um, they're very crazy. They're only one years old, but they keep the family up because they're, they're very fun. They get stuck in random places. I actually adopted two birds after that and their names were Butter and Jam. Now Butter and Jam, uh, they couldn't fly and unfortunately, when I adopted them, they actually had really badly broken wings. So just a message to everyone who does have birds and you know wants to clip their wings, please be, please go to a vet first if you do um, want to clip their wings because they can get pretty badly damaged. So going back to, back to Butter and Jam, um, these were the birds that I adopted. And one time, this was in summer, I actually tried to train them to be comfortable with tricks because as you know, if birds get used to you and they get comfortable with you, they can actually do a few tricks, right? They can, you know, stand um, on your pan, they can fly to you. They can also be put in bird bags. And I know that sounds a bit crazy, but hear me out, yeah? I had this, um, after binge watching a lot of videos on, um, on YouTube, I actually saw a lot of birds be taken out in these, funny looking contraptions called bird bags. Now, when I was training Jam one day, I had so much confidence in him that he wouldn't fly since he had um, very busted wings, but this is where things go a little bit pear-shaped. One day when I had Jam um, in the bag, I was thinking, you know what, maybe I'll just take him outside. He's just probably gonna hop on the chair anyway. He should be fine, I've done it before. But because Jam was actually a bit anxious inside the bag, he actually flew out. And to my surprise, I opened the bag and I was like, what, that just happened? And the bird actually flew over the fence. And I think I was caught in between being shocked and being in awe because I was like, wait a minute, this bird had a broken wing and now he is pretty much flown. And so this is what I tried doing. I tried jumping over the fence um, into my neighbor's backyard. And uh, yeah, I actually did manage to get up despite my small stature, I actually did manage to get up off the fence and I actually got over to the neighbor's fence and I was trying to look for um, the bird. And you know, um, I was starting to panic because I couldn't see this bird anywhere. There was no sign of feathers. There was no sign of um, his chirping. And I was trying to make these bird noises too. I don't know if anyone's ever tried to make bird noises if, you're, if you've lost a pet bird, it looked a bit ridiculous, but that was what I was trying to do as I was trying to find this bird. And I couldn't find him and I was panicking. And my mom, I don't know if anyone has have ever lost a pet. When your parents realize that you've lost a pet, they also freak out. They're also just like, what are you doing? You need to stop, you're hurting yourself. And that's exactly what I was doing. You know, when I was climbing the fences, I was getting bruises all over myself. I was getting scratches and everything. And it was really um, painful trying to look for this bird, but I still persevered. And um, one of the questions uh, you could be asking is, why don't I just let the bird go? And here's the thing, yeah. If I let the bird go, um, he Jam wouldn't actually survive because, because, because he is domesticated. He is so used to getting food given to him and he's not used to defending himself against predators like cats or other big magpies or eagles. Um, so he just wouldn't survive. So I thought, you know, I don't want him to die wherever he is but I will go um, persevere to find him. So that's how much I cared about this bird. So what I did was um, I had to re-strategize because going over the fences and trying to hop into backyards was not helpful and that was trespassing. And I didn't mean to trespass, I actually just accidentally fell into my neighbor's backyard, but I had to come up with a different plan. So I thought to myself, look, if Jam has flown somewhere, he kind of got in far, right? So I thought I would just knock on the neighbor's houses that were around. So I knocked on a few houses and unfortunately no one was there. But then one house seemed to have a few, um, no a few bits of noises, noise coming out of the house. And I knocked on that house and they were home. And this is probably one of the strangest things I've ever asked someone um, while knocking on the house. But when they opened the door, I asked, 
Sorry to bother you, but have you seen a little green bird um, come around? And they actually said, yes, there's one in our backyard. And I was like, what? The bird is in your backyard? I have to go see it. So I ran and I ran and I ran to go see whether or not the bird was there. And thankfully enough, Jam was there shivering, shivering on the windowsill, um, just freaking out. I think he had stunned himself and, um, well, himself more so that he could actually fly. He stunned me, that's for sure. And I actually um, picked him up and uh, hugged him a little bit and brought him back home. So that is my story about how I got to rescue a little bird. I love um, animal rescues. I when I was doing Bible studies the other day, I actually asked a few um, grade sixes and I asked them, what is your favorite YouTube channel? Now for me, if I had to ask, if you had to ask me, one of my favorite YouTube channels is The Dodo. I don't know if anyone is familiar with that channel, but they have a lot of like funny animal videos. They have a lot of like animal rescues that are like a little bit emotional. Um, and I love watching them. So uh, I have been inspired to show you what care looks like, um, you know, through animals. The first one is, about a snake. Has anyone ever seen a snake eat before? They're really, really incredible creatures whose body can stretch and change to fit what they're eating. They don't have the right teeth to chew their prey, so the muscles in their body help push the food towards the stomach. The food is then digested over a long period of time. But what if a snake eats a beach towel? That's pretty dangerous because unlike flesh, it, would, it wouldn't be able to decompose in the snake's body. In short, the snake will die. That's the exact emergency that these vets had to deal with one day. This is someone's pet snake called Monty. She's feeling really unwell and her body is swollen. In the video, you see that the vets carefully tug at the towel while at the same time being cautious to not hurt the snake or themselves. And after the, some time, hurrah! They actually get out this huge, huge towel and the snake ends up being okay. So Monty is actually happily um, <laughs> living well and not eating uh, beach towels. Another inspiring video that I have, that I saw on the internet was um, featured in a tropical place. Now, I don't know about you, but if I could choose anywhere to be right now, it would be in a, in a tropical place for a vacation. Um, I've been to tropical places before um, and my favorite tropical place actually had a lot of turtles swimming around. They're really special creatures and they can actually live up to 50 to 100 years. But that longevity of life won't happen if they're caught in fishing nets. So in this one video that I saw online, um, we see a rescue um, that happens with a turtle. See, this turtle is desperately trying to swim as they're caught in a net. And a few divers on a, bo on a boat spot the turtle and actually take the time to cut out the turtle free from the net. So this is the little guy, he's, he's holding the turtle and he sees the turtle, he's like, all right, I wanna save you. And then now he brings him up to the boat, they cut him free and the little guy's like, yay, I'm free. And then he sets him back to the ocean and I literally think that this, um, this screenshot is him waving back saying, latest guys, I'm free, I'm all good. Now. My last animal rescue story I want to share with you today is one that's pretty close to home. Does anyone remember the bushfires that happened early last year? They were really, really devastating, weren't they? While we did lose a tragic amount of animals, there were a few that were rescued. So here is a video of a firefighter. I believe his name is Sam. He actually found a baby kangaroo while putting out fires. They're actually called baby joeys as well. And as you can see, it's it's pretty distressed, it's pretty uncomfortable, and it's probably like, oh no, I'm you know so close to death. But fortunately, now after Sam got to pick up the kangaroo or the baby joey, um, it is now able to recover and be in a cozy, cozy place. So there's a lot of care that goes into these rescues. And rescues don't actually just involve, you know, being there to care, they actually involve a lot of sacrifice, a lot of time, a lot of energy, and sometimes they even um, involve risking your, your safety. 
to be able to care for something or someone else even. And sometimes I watch these, um, these acts of kindness and care and I'm reminded that if we can care for animals like that, imagine, imagine how much God cares for us. Now there's a Bible verse in Matthew that reminds us about how much God cares for us. And he tells us to never worry about some basic things but rather to prioritize and pursue God in his kingdom. There is far more to your life than the food you put in your stomach, more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to, to a job description, careless in the care of God, and you count far more to him than birds. And if God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which I've never even seen, don't you think he'll attend to you? Take pride in you. Do his best for you. What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, not to be so preoccupied with getting, with getting so you can respond to God's giving. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worried about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when time comes. Now, I really love these verses. Um, there's the things that I have to remind myself daily is to not worry and that God is going to take care of you.